Stay tuned for another edition of Our Space. We'll be right back. Well, we want to welcome everyone tonight and thank mm -hmm. everyone as well, love, for being with us. And, yes, you know, do. one of the things that I think is so significant uh, that we like to do is that people are encouraged. And I believe the word of God is encouraging. Mm -hmm. I believe that we all uh, need to be encouraged and to be strengthened in our faith and really uh, tonight in our space, I believe once again, as we've welcomed the people, uh, you're joining with us tonight or whenever you're viewing this, make sure you get your Bible, get something that you can make notes with there because I believe that helps. I believe it helps that we are studious with the things of God, mm -hmm. that we take what's being said as, as, as God talking to us, as long as we're talking about God's word and things that the Holy Spirit would speak to us, and then we can write those things down uh, so that we uh, can refer back to them and right. when we need them. So we just want you to know that we really appreciate you each for joining in. And, uh, you know, we have been talking about over a while now, um, moving, how we can move from being a victim to being a victor, amen. amen. And so, uh, yes. you know, when we feel like a victim sometimes, well, you know, we feel like that we can't do anything or can't do anything right. Um, and so we need to move from uh, not knowing what to do to knowing what to do, amen, or not feeling we can do the right thing or nothing's going to work out to the other side of that, which is the, the victor side. And mm -hmm. what we've been talking about um, recently is the impact of our thinking upon our lives. And we talked about that last week. So yeah. we want to pick back up on that. And we really what we're going to do tonight is we're not going to finish this, but we're going to talk about God's prescription. In other words, how to deal with, with that thought. So what I want to do really quick with everyone is just review a couple of things that I believe will be helpful from last week. And that was reminding us the impact of our thinking upon our lives. Amen. And so everything starts with thoughts and with our thinking. That's, right. That's what we have to understand. Everything does. Because really there was, there's never been a word that's been spoken or action that's been acted that was not first a thought. And so everything begins with thinking or thoughts. Amen. And thoughts, we're going to, I say this often, but this is important. Thoughts are important because thoughts were designed to produce beliefs. Amen. Right. Now, what we have to understand is thoughts themselves are not beliefs. Amen. But um, and the, and, but if the enemy can make us, Satan, make us believe the thoughts that we think is exactly what we have to, to, to have and to believe on, then he's duped us. He sure has. Okay. So even though we have to understand that thoughts are not the same as beliefs, thoughts were designed to produce beliefs in our lives. Mm -hmm. Amen. So Amen. what we have to do is we have to, we can, we have to understand this. We can choose what we believe. Once That's we have right. a thought, we can either reject that or we can receive that. So we can choose what we believe. So what we have to do is we have to choose wisely. This is why we want to talk about uh, God's pr prescription in dealing with our thought lots. And you know, uh, we many times are bombarded by thoughts. Amen. Um, and so the good news is that even though we can be b bombarded with thoughts, we can take control over our thinking and over our thought life. That's Amen. right, because you can't stop thoughts from coming to you. That's thoughts right. are going to come and yep. thoughts are going to go. That's yep. part of life, yep. living on this earth. And what we have to do is we have to uh, judge those thoughts That's rightly right. 
And if they're not from God, then we have to do what the Word of God says to do. Hey, then we can destroy right. those thoughts. We can yeah. get rid of those thoughts and replace them replace with God's thoughts. Them. Amen. So we want to talk about how to how we can really do that. And last week, we, we made a couple of statements I want to reiterate about. And that is about toxic thoughts or toxic thinking, how they affect. We talked, found it last week, how they affect our bodies and its health. Amen. Mm. And so we found out this research shows that 75 to 98 percent of mental, physical and behavioral illnesses come from one's thought life. In other words, they the origin of those amazing? things come from our thought life. So in other words, if we have wrong or toxic thinking, it's going to produce mental, physical and behavioral illnesses in their life. Amen. And so this is why. That's a mouthful right It there. is. This is why our minds are so important. And one reason why our minds are so important, because our thoughts are so important, because our, our thoughts, our minds are the doorway to our spirits. That's right, into our hearts. To our hearts. Mm-hmm. See, we are spirit beings. We possess a soul or mind. We live in a body. What we have to understand is the reason why our minds are attacked so much is because it is the doorway to our heart. Or the entrance to, into the, our heart. Into our spirits. Mm-hmm. And Satan wants to affect our spirits. But yeah, so does exactly. God. And yeah, what, right. what we feed on eventually gets, and what we feed and believe on gets into our, our hearts. Mm-hmm. And so here's what we... Un, we need to understand that wrong thinking weakens us spiritually, but on the other side, uh-huh. right thinking strengthens us spiritually so that we can move from victims to being victors. Yes. Okay. Praise yes. God. And so uh, we, you know, God doesn't want us to be victims of our life and our circumstances, but the enemy knows if he can weaken us spiritually, then uh, he and he does that by affecting our thinking because our, our minds are the doorway to our spirit. So wrong thinking produces a weakened spirit, but right thinking produces a strong spirit. Strong. And this is what we're talking about. And we're talking about God's prescription in dealing with that thought. So tonight we we're going to only cover one thought of this or one part of this and then next week we're going to uh, pick back one up part again of this prescription of God's that's right. prescription that's exactly right but every part of the prescription is really important and so yes, tonight the first part is this number 1 know the thoughts of God mm-hmm. okay and so in other words in dealing with our thoughts we're going to have to first know the prescription is know the thoughts of God in other words we're going to have to know God's Word. So let's look here. Amen. And the reason why this is so important is because God's Word is our weapon against Satan. And, you know, that's not the only weapon, but it is the first weapon that we see Jesus use constantly to defeat Satan in combat or in battle. When Jesus walked this earth, not only uh, not only did he give us the example, uh, but now he, the, was he was the example. And now his word uh, tells us the same thing. That's and right. so we see that Jesus, when he was tempted by Satan in the in the wilderness temptation, mm-hmm. and that he each time re, uh, responded to Satan's temptation with, it is written or it is said. In other words, he quoted what God's word said because God's word has spiritual power to defeat spiritual enemies. Mm -hmm. Amen. But here's the thing. God's Word has power to change situations in our our lives because here's what we have to understand. Uh, Many things that show up in our lives physically are, uh, its origin comes from the Spirit. Okay, from the spirit world. So even though you cannot see Satan with your natural eyes, uh, there's natural effects that that come to us that are from behind the scene. In other words, in the spiritual realm, things are are manifested in this natural realm. And uh, when we use the spiritual weapons of God's word, it not only defeats the the unseen enemy, but the cause and the effect in this realm as well is changed by using 
God's word. So the, the number one, know the thoughts of God. So let's look at, at Isaiah tonight, Isaiah 55. And uh, we want to look there together. Uh, open your Bibles with me. And uh, most of these scriptures tonight will be very familiar with us. But, you know, here's what we have to think about. The scripture says, a faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It didn't say faith comes by having heard. And so, but yet at the same time, we could have many new people viewing. We could have many uh, newer believers as well as seasoned believers. And you know, here's the thing I found that seasoned believers don't mind hearing the word again because they know that it is, it is the answer. What were you going to say, love? Um, I just got a word of knowledge from the Holy Spirit. Wow, okay. The Spirit of God just came on me. My hands are burning. And this is what I got. Uh, anything to do with the right part of you. It could be like you're right. And this is, this is well, just, the right side of your nostril. Somebody has had trouble with the right side of their nostril. It's being healed. Then the right God. ventricle in your heart. Somebody's had trouble with the right ventricle in their heart. It's being healed. Just that word right came up and then the nostril and then the ventricle and the heart. You're being healed of that right now. Just lift your hands and yes, thank Lord, God thank for, you for healing you. People. Just thank Him and <clears throat> praise Him for healing you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. All right, thank you, love. I know I know the people out there are praising God for that, Amen. especially the ones they that are receiving that. Yeah, That's believe right. that you receive. Amen. Praise God. That's wonderful. So we want to look at Isaiah 55 and verse 8 and 9 as we pick back up. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. This is God talking. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Amen. And so even though that God's thoughts are not, he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. He doesn't mean, he do, he's not saying that we can't have his thoughts. He's just saying that his thoughts are so higher than our thoughts. Mm -hmm. Our natural thinking is so lo much lower than, than um, God's thoughts. Mm -hmm. But we can learn God's thoughts right. by knowing his word. What he's right. saying is his word is his thoughts. And they're recorded for us to know what to believe, to know what God has said and to know what God, uh, uh, what we're to believe. Now in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, this is a very familiar portion of scripture uh, for one. many of you, but it's a great one. <laughs> for it says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected in. Amen. So once again, we know God's thoughts by God's word. So God's word is God's thoughts. Amen. And so this is so important because God's word is recorded. So we know what God's thoughts are and it's recorded so that we would know what to believe. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we are to know God's thought and how we're to know God's thought is by knowing his words. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of times people think that that we could not, uh, many times in religion, we are kind of taught or programmed to think that, well, God is so big and so great, which he is, all of those things. But we couldn't really know his thoughts or what his will is, is really mysterious. But yet the scripture tells us that his word is his will, That's and right. we can know exactly what his will is by knowing what his word is. In other words, we can know his thoughts, what he thinks, and, and what God wants by knowing his word. Mm -hmm. And so this is so important. Yes, and so we have to know the thoughts of God. Now, in, in uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, here's what it says. It says, uh, this is really important for us. Turn there with me. And uh, Romans 12, 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. Well, notice it talks about the will of God right there and how we're going to uh, know the will of God is by renewing our mind. Well, we renew our mind with the Word of God mm -hmm. so we can know the will of God. 
That's Amen. Right. And so this is important. Uh, so we renew our mind so that we can actually know the thoughts of God and begin to think like God thinks. Yeah. There is tremendous, powerful freedom in thinking like God thinks. That's right. And when you say renew your mind, yeah. you're talking about replacing That's... the old way of thinking or the way you used to think about situations yes. or certain things with what God's Word says. So that's it's exactly right. the law of replacement. Yeah, that's so good. That's exactly. I love, love here from the uh, Passion Translation. We want to read that to, uh, tonight with everyone. Uh, Romans 12, 2, it says, Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. It's this really will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisf satisfying and perfect in His eyes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. So notice it so says good. that we would be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how we think. Mm -hmm. and, and so our thinking has to be affected by the Word of God. Mm -hmm. The prescription in dealing with that thought life, the first prescription is know the thoughts of God because we're going to have to replace our thoughts and wrong thoughts with the thoughts of God. Mm -hmm. And we and the thoughts of God is, is His Word. His Word is His thoughts. That's Amen. Right. And so I think this is, is so important. So say that again. Who has to do that? We have to do that. We have to do we that. We have to do that. God will not renew our mind for us. No, Neither he can won't. He. He's asked us to do something That's with right. our minds, and that is to renew our minds. And to, in other words, we're to replace our thoughts with His thoughts, and That's we know right. what His thoughts are. Yeah. We find them in the Word of God. This is so, why it's so important that we study and we we know the Word of God, we memorize the Word of God so we can use the, the, the Word in everyday action. You know, when Satan tempted Jesus in the wilderness, he didn't pull out a scroll and say, no, well, let me didn't. find this where this is at and say this. No. It was in his heart. He had it in his heart. He, he hid the Word in his heart mm -hmm. so he knew how to overcome Satan. He yes. knew to over, overcome that temptation and he knew how to deal with the thoughts that were came to him. That's he right. knew how to do that because he knew the thoughts of God. Mm -hmm. When we know the thoughts of God, we know when other thoughts come to us, hey, they don't, they're not weighing up. They're not weighing out and not weighing up to the level of what God said. We know the difference between the thoughts of man, the thoughts of the devil, our own thoughts and the thoughts of God. And the only way we're going to know that is by knowing God's word. So Amen. This takes action and discipline on our part. Most definitely. Yeah. And God's prescription, just like taking a natural prescription, takes discipline. That's you have right. to you have to do it as prescribed. That's right. And it doesn't do us any good to have medicine that we don't follow the prescription. Right. And or so, never take. Or we never take. And so uh, that this is what we have to do. And so God's word or God's truth has the, the has the power to destroy fear, doubt worry, or anything else that tries to bind or defeat you or I and, and make us a victim. Mm -hmm. God's Word does. And what is what is God's Word? Well, God's Word is how He thinks about something. Mm -hmm. Although you can say it like this, God's thoughts, we know what they are by knowing God's Word. Mm -hmm. And so we, our first prescription is to know the thoughts of, of God. God. In other words, we can say it like this. We know what God's Word says. Yeah. Amen. Or what He thinks. Or what He thinks. Because His thoughts is the way He thinks about us. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And about any circumstance, any, any situation. Circ that's right. Amen. How to deal with that. And so here's another uh, thing that I think is important when we talk about know the thoughts of God. In Second Timothy chapter 2, of verse 15, it says, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly de uh, dividing. dividing the word of truth. Mm -hmm. Notice it calls the Bible the word, word of, of truth. truth. And it tells us that we have to rightly divide it. Well, if we can rightly divide it, it could be wrongly divided. That's right. It can be wrongly divided. And if we are thinking 
opposite of what God's word says, then we will wrongly divide, divide it. We'll yeah. say something different than God said. We'll think something different than God uh, thinks. And we'll uh, believe something different than God believes. And that and we cannot rightly divide the word of God without actively studying the word to show ourselves approved. One translation says this word means to be eager. Amen. Mm. And so, in other words, we have to give attention to the word of God. It can't, we can't uh, deal with it on a haphazard uh, way. Halfway we have, basis. That's no, right. That's right. We, we have to give our whole heart in it. That's Put exactly our whole right. Heart in it. Put our whole heart in it and, and let that be speaking to our life. In other words, we want to know what God thinks about cer- certain situations. And we do that by knowing what his word says, because we're going to have to replace um, our wrong thinking mm-hmm. with God's right thinking. And that takes time. It does take time. It doesn't time. happen overnight. Yeah. And yeah. matter of fact, it's an ongoing basis. It has ongoing. to become part of our, our life. And we really never stop because never the stop. renewing of our mind is a continual process and we never stop doing that. That's right. Amen. Now, the last verse tonight, love, that I want us to look at with everyone, it comes from John chapter 8. Verse 31 and 32. While as we close out uh, tonight's uh, uh, service, man, the time has really gone by. Wow. But we want to make this powerful for everyone. And in John 8, 31, Jesus said these powerful words. He says, and then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him. So we could say it like this. Jesus said these same things to those that believe on him. You there, uh, you don't have to be a Jew, Jew to believe on him. Whoever is following Christ is believing on him. So here's what he said. If you continue in my word, then you are my, dis- my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Notice here, knowing the truth is the first step to freedom. This is why we have to know the Word of God because God's Word is truth. You got to settle that. Until you understand that God's Word is the truth that we we measure everything else by, it governs our life, our belief system, then we'll never receive from God at the level that God would want us because we can't. Our faith has to be in His Word. There is no such thing as faith in God apart from faith in God's Word. So knowing the truth, like Jesus said, is the first step of freedom. And, and that is uh, that is surely true when it pertains to our thought life yeah. and to our thinking. This is why I'm saying that in dealing with our thoughts, this is the first part of God's prescription. We have to know the thoughts of God. We have to know God's Word. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. And so That's love, the key. that is the key. The Everyone, answer. that is the key. That's number one. So we give you the first step next week. You won't want to miss. We're going to talk about part two or the second step and the third step possibly. But we just want to take our time through this because mm-hmm. we want everybody so to really to get this. And really, many people may say, well, I, I really know that I have to, I, I know that God's word it, it is his thoughts. Amen. And, and, and what God thinks is revealed by His Word. Yep, we have, but we have to understand if we're going to move from toxic thinking to victorious and healthy thinking, and we're going to move from being a victim and a thought life to being a victor, then we have the first step is to know the thoughts of God. And we can know it in every area of our life. Mm-hmm. We can know it in salvation. Yeah. In other words, it's God's will that none perish and all come to repentance. That's we can right. know it concerning the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes. See, every believer is born of the Spirit, but every believer is not filled, filled with the Holy with the Spirit. Spirit. And all through the New Testament, oh, we see that main emphasis for the believer is to grow in their walk with God, but to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. We see all through There's the book of Acts when God. believers got <laughs> saved, the first thing the apostles did after they got saved was to ensure that these believers were introduced to the baptism of the Holy Spirit and and to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit or be filled with, with the Holy the Spirit. Holy Ghost. Amen. Yeah. So that is the will of God. We it also is. know that God's thoughts concerning healing. 
it is the will of God that we're healed. Yes. Well, we say a lot of times people get, get confused about that because they, they say, well, what about my experience? My experience. Well, experiences mean nothing unless they line up with the Word of God. Right. The Word of God was designed to produce beliefs that were, would form experiences in our life mm-hmm. or cause experiences to happen. But we can't judge God based upon our experience. We have to judge God based upon His Word. Mm-hmm. And His Word says it is His will for us to be well, That's to right. prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. That's, That's why right. Jesus died. And so we have to make sure that we're siding in with God, we're thinking God's thoughts regardless of what we've experienced. See, you didn't experience salvation in your in life and then believe on God. No, you had to you had to believe on on what he said about salvation. You had to take you those to thoughts and first. you had to hear something and let the message about salvation persuade your heart right. so you know it was God's will to save you. That's and right. then you could believe to be saved and receive Christ. Yeah. That became your experience, but you first thought right, then you believed right and you received those things. That's how it works in all of this. And so remember, knowing the truth is the first step to all of our freedom. And we're going to do that by knowing the thoughts of God or God's word. And this is why uh, us coming to you and you allowing us to speak these truths in your life are not only deepening the discipleship in your life, but it's also preparing you to help others. That's because right. in the time of COVID, in, in closing tonight, love, in this time of COVID and different things, people still go on to work. They're still going to places. You still have friends. Maybe some of the things, the way we interact temporarily ha- have been affected, yes, and been, been changed. But we're still called to, to disciple people. We're mm-hmm. still called to help people grow in their walk in service to God. That's, That's right. what discipleship is. And so the things you're learning are, are enabling you to have the goods, not only in your life, but to help others, mm-hmm. to transmit those powerful truths to others. And we want to encourage you to do that. The second thing that we want to say in closing tonight is this, how important as Sunday morning services are. Mm-hmm. And if you're unable so to exciting. attend for any reason, don't forget you can go online, go to our website, go to the YouTube channel, check us out on Facebook. All these things right. are designed to feed your faith. And I know some people cannot come yet um, for different circumstances and situations, but don't go without being fed. That's right. Amen. And we let you know because Many people are still asking the question, are we open? We've been open for months and, and, uh, more and more people are coming by. Uh-huh. Amen. We're doing what we, uh, the, by the guidelines to make you feel safe and, and well, but people are receiving from God. And we want to mm-hmm. remind you, we're looking forward to seeing you again, uh-huh. not just on, a, on our space next week, but also personally and a service 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. So Pastor Debbie and I tonight, we just want you to know we love you. Amen. Think the thoughts of God and we do that by knowing what the Word says and begin to think the same way that God's Word says for us to think. Hey, we call you blessed. We'll see you soon.